Tonight on the Connecticut on Connecticut's news station calls for action after yet another shooting on a college campus. The somber reaction we're hearing from those impacted by gun violence. Plus, the search continues for two suspects who led police on a pursuit, then got away. What we know so far. And honoring our veterans on Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day, the events held across the state to pay respects to those who lost their lives that day. Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And good evening and thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Carmen Chow. We're learning new details tonight about a shooting at the University of Las Vegas that left three people dead and another injured. Law enforcement officials say the gunman was a longtime business professor who had unsuccessfully sought a job at the university. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre uh, Jean -Pierre calling the latest shooting at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas horrific and identified gun violence across the country as reaching a, quote, crisis level. From Las Vegas to Texas to Memphis to Maine, when will, be en when will it be enough? When will it be enough? We are in crisis and we cannot continue to live like this. The three people killed and one injured were all faculty members at the university. And in the wake of the shooting at UNLV yesterday, a call to action in D.C. Connecticut's congressional delegation joining survivors and families of gun violence victims urging federal lawmakers to pass what they call common sense gun control measures. Fox 61 political reporter Emma Wolfhorst joins us now in studio to explain. Emma. Brent, Carmen, these survivors, family members and advocates gathering today just hours after Wednesday night's annual vigil for all victims of gun violence in Washington. These renewed calls also come after Senate Republicans blocked efforts by Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy and other Senate Democrats yesterday to pass new gun control legislation. She stretches her arms but no longer can hold all three of her children at once anymore. Kristen Song's 15-year-old son Ethan accidentally shot and killed himself with an unsecured gun at a friend's house in Guilford in 2018. What's so heartbreaking is that Ethan's death was 100% preventable. Song reflected on her son's death Thursday during a press conference in Washington, D.C., surrounded by other survivors and loved ones of gun violence victims. Vibrant, beautiful daughter. She was in her own home, in her own bed. Judy Richardson's daughter, Darian, died in 2010 after intruders shot Darian in her home in Portland, Maine. The gunman, who I will add, obtained his weapon legally, simply walked into the school, armed with an AR-15, and massacred 17 people. And that took three and a half minutes. Schwartz's cousin Alex was killed with an AR-15 at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Only an assault weapon causes this much destruction in so little time. All these advocates sharing a clear message with federal legislators Thursday. They want Congress to pass what they call common sense gun control laws. It is absolutely political because we have the ability as legislators and lawmakers to make laws that keep people safe. It is absolutely political. No, we have not passed a universal background checks bill. No, we still need to pass an assault weapons ban. But we are finally at this critical moment where the anti-gun violence movement has more power than the gun lobby, where we win more frequently than they stop us from winning. And Murphy introduced a universal background check bill on the Senate floor yesterday, but that was quickly blocked by Senate Republicans. He and the rest of the Connecticut delegation are calling for that measure, as well as a federal version of Ethan's law, which requires safe gun storage and an assault weapons ban. Carmen, Brent. Emma, thank you. One person was killed in a crash in Middletown. It happened last night on Atkins Street in the area of Timber Ridge Road. Police say 30-year-old Matthew LeClaire crashed into a tree. He was pronounced dead on scene. And police are still investigating what caused that crash. Police are investigating a fatal crash that happened on the eastbound side of Route 2 in East Hartford. State police say around 9 last night, a driver identified as Curtis Waters crashed into a guardrail near exit 2 and went down an embankment and hit a tree. He was thrown from the vehicle and was pronounced dead on the scene. 
And just an hour before that crash, state police responded to a deadly two vehicle crash on Route 8 south in Trumbull. State troopers uh, say they hit each other while one of them was merging onto the highway from Route 15. They say the driver of the car that was already on the road was 34 year old Daniel DeMichael of Norwalk. Trooper said he was thrown from the car and died at the scene. A five year old in that car and the driver of the other car were both hurt. New Haven police investigating a shooting tonight. Police say a 43 year old man was shot on Lowen Avenue and was taken to the hospital. He told police that he was shot while two suspects attempted to break into his work van. They ran from the scene and police searched the area but did not find the suspects. Anyone with any information should call police. And new tonight, four men have been found guilty for their involvement in a violent street gang in Bridgeport. Keyshawn Donald, Trevon Wright, Eric Hayes, and Trayvon Jones were members of what was known as the East End Gang. They've been connected to several shootings and homicides dating back to January of 2018. Hayes is now facing up to 20 years in prison. The other three face life in prison. More than 40 members and associates of warring gangs in Bridgeport have now been convicted, helping solve eight murders and approximately 20 shootings. Rocky Hill police are searching for two people who led them on a chase on Interstate 91. One of those people has arrest warrants in multiple communities. Now the incident starting at a gas station on Silas Dean Highway. Fox 61's Brooke Griffin has what we know so far. Rocky Hill police tell us the suspect search is still on for those involved in this case. Now it all started here at the Shell gas station behind me. That's when an officer recognized a specific SUV with a driver that he knew has multiple active arrest warrants at this current time. Now he says whenever he approached them, that is when they fought him and then tried to run. Police tell us this started around 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon when the officer saw a New Hampshire license plate that looked familiar. When the officer got near the white Jeep Cherokee, the male driver and female passenger resisted arrest and refused police orders. The officer used his taser, but it was not effective. The pair drove off from the gas station, nearly hitting a few police cruisers as they got away. Investigators tell us the driver got onto I-91 South. That's right across from the gas station. They say they notified police and other towns to be on the lookout for the Jeep. Police eventually found the Jeep at the residence Inn on Cromwell Avenue. That's here in Rocky Hill. They tell us they searched the hotel and used thermal imaging to check the surrounding area, but the man and woman were nowhere to be found. At this time, that search is still on and police say they do know the names of those two suspects. They have dealt with them before, but they're not going to release them at this time because that will hinder their investigation. But they say if you know anybody that drives a white Jeep Cherokee with New Hampshire Hampshire plates that could have been involved in this chase. Go ahead and give them a call in Rocky Hill, Brooke Griffin, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Brooke, thank you. And turning to the weather watch now, another cold day out there. Yeah, meteorologist Ryan Breton joining us now. Ryan, I know we still have Friday to get out of the way, but we're all looking ahead to the weekend. That's what we want to know about. And it's going to be a much milder weekend, Brent and Carmen. Uh, temperatures right now, though, are on the chilly side. 34 in Hartford. We're at 39 degrees in New Haven. And as we take a look at the radar, we've got a few flurries that are out there right now. Nothing all that heavy, but there are some flakes in the air in northwest Connecticut. We'll take you into this uh, snow shower that's moving through parts of uh, Norfolk, Cornwall, Goshen, a few flakes that are in the air and with temperatures below freezing, don't be shocked to see a few of those as we go through the night. You can kind of see this area of snow that's been off and on producing some flurries today. This will continue for another few hours, especially in northwest Connecticut. Temperatures tonight will be dropping down into the 20s inland right around 30 degrees along the shoreline. So plan on a chilly start to your Friday morning. But the nice thing about your Friday is there won't be much wind. So it will be warmer than it was today and with a little bit more sun and less wind, it should feel pretty nice. High temperatures tomorrow afternoon will get back into the low 40s and then we have even milder air moving in over the weekend, which means when this next storm arrives later Sunday into Sunday night, it will be rain. There also will be some wind with it, too. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. Ryan, thank you. Today is Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. Veterans across the state are honoring the more than 2,400 lives lost in the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941. The Waterbury Veterans Memorial Committee held a ceremony this afternoon to pay their respects. Henry Ludwig Carlson. America was unprepared. December 7th, 1941. 
The attack on Pearl Harbor in Hawaii was one of the darkest days of our nation's history. Thousands of service members and civilians lost their lives when the Japanese launched a surprise attack. Mary Kai, a Gold Star mother, knows that loss all too well. She lost her son Michael to the Vietnam War in 1967 when he was only 21 years old. It's just something that shouldn't have happened, and and, and, and it didn't it didn't amount to anything except lost and heartache. Of those who died, 18 of them were from Connecticut. Waterbury Mayor Paul Pernaruski Jr. highlighting the lesson brought on by Pearl Harbor. The solution is really to just put aside our differences, come together as a people, have a common goal, focus on what it is that we face. Facing those differences, we still see today as a country. I think we're more aware of the dangers. Uh, if people could just get along, you know, it just seems such a waste for somebody to hate so much that they could destroy just like what's going on right now. After the ceremony, members gathered at the Pearl Harbor Bridge on Freight Street. A small boat was launched into the water followed by Kite throwing a bouquet of flowers as a symbol of honoring those lives lost at their graves. That you have not sacrificed your life in vain. That we, America today, is stronger because of your sacrifice. Of the 18 men who died in Connecticut, one of them was from Waterbury. His father was also a popular Waterbury police detective. Well, tonight marks the first night of Hanukkah. The Crown Market in West Hartford kicked off the Festival of Lights with a celebration today. The community coming together at the shop this afternoon to celebrate the holiday with traditional food such as lakis and other mouthwatering Hanukkah treats. I think that Hanukkah highlights the light and we want to be the light in our community. We want our community to have a place to come, to be with each other, to support each other and to share happiness and have some good times when there's been a lot of bad times recently. Hanukkah continues through December 15th.